Lindsay, you put this episode together, and uh, if I read the title correctly, it says, I don't know. <laughs> episode one. I don't know. Yeah, there's a one question mark, question mark, which is which is fair because I I, I don't think that don't our know. episode numbers are correct. But yeah, so you title it, I don't know. Is, is there some real deep meaning here behind the title of this week's episode? I didn't actually know what we were going to talk about. So I started with, I don't know. Then once I figured it out, I filled in all of the stuff, but I never went back and changed the title. So mm, mm. deep meaning is I was too excited about my Chick-fil-A and forgot to change the title. All right. Fair enough. I guess we will get through our intro and then hop into this big batch of I don't know. <laughs> Welcome to the RV Small Talk Podcast, where we talk about lightweight trailers, truck campers, and the people, places, and adventures that go right along with them. We are your hosts from Princess Craft RV, now also in Houston. Bam! Ooh, Ooh that's news, right? New yeah, intro. we're in Round Rock and Houston. I am Clint. And I am full of Chick-fil-A. All right, the spicy one. Spicy chicken sandwich. All right. And PJ is not here for this recording because she is doing businessy stuff all over the She's always She's on an airplane. Here. Yeah. Coming back from doing businessy stuff. So we do know when she'll be back again? Um, yes. Okay. Today. All right. Well. Um, yeah. And Oh, do you have more intro? Sorry. Nah, just if you if you're interested in uh, any past episodes, check out rvsmalltalk.com and we're on social media, look us up there or on YouTube, RV Small Talk Podcast. That's where we are. Are you ready? I am. Tell me things that you don't know. Boom boom. Well, PJ's on our way back um, from businessy things, and then next week, a handful of us are headed off to Vegas to do more businessy things. Vegas does does business actually get done? What's what's the nature of this trip? It does. Is your phone is ringing? Who didn't turn off their phone? Um, I didn't turn off my phone, but it isn't the one that's ringing. Okay, it's done now. Okay. Businessy stuff gets done in Vegas. It's RVDA, which is the RV Dealers Association. But I really like it because they have like classes. And so you go to classes. Wait, 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 wait. Like all day you wait. go to different classes. Like, Don't interrupt me. Like, see, I have a problem with, with this whole class-based tiered society thing. I mean, didn't. Didn't India start outlawing this? I mean, are, why are we why are we playing this game? <laughs> so, oh, I should learn a lot. <laughs> I'm excited about <laughs> Just that. Move Just yeah. moving past it, <laughs> kind of like the foot. Oh, uh, the foot. Um, okay. okay. So anyway, I just wanted to. I mean, next week is going to be crazy. I'm not mm -hmm. sure what we're doing for the live or the podcast. From our dealership, it's going to be PJ, you, Sue Ann, Cody, and Steve, right? Yep. Is that correct? Yep. And that represents a big swath of the leadership here. So who are you going to, you, are we going to have somebody special? Ooh, I know. Okay. Everybody listening, go onto Facebook on the RV Small Talk podcast community page mm -hmm. And post your ideas for Clint for guests that he can have on. You can pull somebody from Princess Craft. Do you want a tech? Do you want a salesperson? Mm, Do you want doing. a yeah. parts person to talk about Would parts? You like a part of a person. I don't want to say a foot. <laughs> Clint and I were like kind of watching this documentary about a foot, and we don't get to finish it now because we're doing this podcast. We had to work. And I'm not upset about it, but like, it will keep me up tonight. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, RVDA will happen. The podcast will be uh, interesting. Mm -hmm. So if you have any ideas for poor Clint that we are leaving here all alone, uh, go to RV Small Talk Community on Facebook and give him some suggestions. Sure, sure. 
Um, well, what else? Um, we've, we're through a bunch of our busyness for the mm-hmm. end of the year. We've got rallies of out events. of the way. We've got um, shows. shows. Now you it's did an air down. show? Yes, I was at an air show this past week in Houston, which was super cool. One of the largest air shows in the nation. Clint nerded out. Super nerded out. <laughs> if I could just, I, I wanted my kids there because I wanted them to go to an air show, but, but I would have had, a, I would have nerded even more without the kids there. Because I bet they, they were, had fun. I think they did, but they really wanted just to eat all the all the snacks that they well, had there. Oh yeah. Did they have funnel cakes? Yeah. 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 They did. Um big planes, lots of planes, helicopters. My kids got to to get inside a helicopter, not ride, but they got to go inside. We showed off trailers in the Go RVing booth. Now Go RVing, you may or may not know who they are, but they have they're the marketing wing of the R V. Um, industry. Are you doing airplane large. references on purpose? No, but it's happening very organically. <laughs> so, so what they they do is they <laughs> they take the interests, obviously, of the manufacturers and dealerships that are part of. I guess it's RVDA. Is it RVDA? I don't. I don't RVIA? know if they're. I think it's so, RVIA. I don't know. They're the marketing wing of the industry. We'll just leave it at that, and yeah. we can research that more later. And they, I've seen their commercials on the Super Bowl. I've seen their commercials on major events. Yeah. Go but they RVing go is, to big events. It's like uh, the got milk of RVs. Right, right. And they promote people getting introduced to the, I caution to say the lifestyle, but but what you can be RVing. involved in. Yeah, RVing. Yeah. <laughs> Because calling something the lifestyle can mean a lot of things to a lot of people these days. <laughs> so, all right. So uh, that was a neat event. And we would like to, I don't know if it's going to happen before the again? end of the year. No, well, I want to do that. Yeah, our air shows all the time. I, I know that we still have designs to do a an off-grid camp out. I'm just not sure that we can pull it off before the end of the year. I was thinking about that too. Mm-hmm. I think the beginning of the year would work. And I think even if it's in January or February, depending mm-hmm. on the weather, mm-hmm. it might not even be that bad. And we stand a chance of having, you know, those those wonderful campfire moments, whereas yes. a lot of the time in Texas, number one, bird, burn ban. But number two, so hot. Why? I already bring <laughs> you guys know me. I already bring every blanket mm-hmm. in the entire house. So I don't know. I think that could be in the works for the beginning of this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I, maybe we could do December, but that gets tricky with people traveling. So did you not push record? No, I, I thought maybe I didn't, but I did. Okay. Everybody, we're okay. So <laughs> um, <clears throat> this podcast is a little scattered, but I found some interesting things in the RV news world, okay. and I thought maybe it would be time for a little bit of a catch up with the Those RV who are news listening section right now. You're listening with me. I actually have not read over what you, you haven't. Put <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, but some of this stuff might be stuff that you guys have all heard of, but sure. it's all pretty recent, and I thought pretty interesting. The first one was kind of huge for me. So you know how California did the generator ban? Right. Okay, well, have you heard that they, like, banned gas vehicles? And Yeah, in very specific areas. And this has been a big thing over the past few years. Like, they wouldn't let... There's a new certification if you have an off-road vehicle mm-hmm. that it has to be tagged differently, and you can't... Even if it was previously street legal off-road vehicle, a lot of that category now has to be completely trailered out to very specific specific and limited locations and trailered, trailered out there and trailered back because they no longer apply. Basically. Yeah. I mean, I'm thinking, so it's like, it's going to take place in 2035, which mm-hmm. really isn't that far away, especially how no. many people we hear say, right. oh, I'm planning for 10 years. You know, I'm planning for seven years Isn't or that whatever. Crazy? Yeah, we hear that all the time. Yeah. People who are, who are like planning to buy in such a long time yeah. or they're planning to they, they have their bucket list trip. They may be already doing the RV thing. But But in 10 years when they, yeah. Right. So Mm -hmm. this is going to affect that if you're planning for that in California and not only for your 
tow vehicle. Mm -hmm. Like if you're planning on buying a tow vehicle for a larger RV, um, they there's no there there won't be gas ones, but um, class what like B like vans, yeah. class Bs, right? Smaller class Bs mm -hmm. the right. aren't gonna. I mean, you can you. I you're doing great. I'm having trouble with words, but like it it is bonkers to me that they can just stop selling them this is such a this is such a strong arm move by the government to to force now do i believe that that it's it's well within our reach to to develop these technologies and and greener technology and stuff like that i think that, that it's it, it's a process and we're in the process but this strong arming its timeline like this this the hard stop mm -hmm. and it's up to what vehicles that are like 8,000 pounds, mm -hmm. but they're already talking about moving it up to 14,000 pounds, which is going to include Bro. a whole Bro. other classification of motorized right. homes. So I'm thinking they're probably going to be, I mean, I don't know what, I haven't read the, the stuff that they're putting forward, but maybe there's a grandfathering stage for some stuff they certainly wasn't for the off-road vehicles off-road vehicles was a hard stop oh, yeah but. you can i mean you can buy them before that and yeah. it's not like you'll be fined or kicked off the road but yeah at that in 2035 you cannot sell anymore mm -hmm. you cannot mm -hmm. sell anything gas powered um so yeah that's gonna affect so i can't sell my vehicle. son to anybody Gas powered. <laughs> uh, other states, Massachusetts, New York, Oregon, Vermont, Washington, um, Minnesota, Virginia are all kind of expected to follow suit. Well, there is a saying that how California goes, so goes the nation. And I think that they wear that with a badge of like a badge of honor in California. But isn't California the number two state for RV sales? Or is it Florida? I think it's Florida and then California, and then but California. I could be wrong. But I, I mean, they're up there, though. Oh, they're way so up there. Way up this, there. I mean, I understand they're talking about vehicles, but it is going to really impact the RV industry. So in how's that going to affect? No, so we're in the industry. This is going to affect Wait, anything. Wait, you're in the industry? industry? Uh, I mean, I, I I'm in the so. industry, too. <gasps> nice to meet you. We're a part of something. All right. Something larger than ourselves. <laughs> larger than a foot? <laughs> Ooh. Maybe a couple. So, so how does this look from our vantage point? Obviously, we for the history of Princess Craft, we've dealt in trailers, towables, and truck campers. So, I mean, depending on the development of cyber cyber, cyber trucks by Tesla or Rivian trucks or whoever, it may not affect the towables massively by the time the technology of 2035 comes around. But it might, you know, um, truck campers. I have my question because we're talking about a very limited number of trucks that are truck campers aren't. There are no truck campers designed for anything that's being mass produced as a electric truck right now. Right. And I think that there are there's the almost the near electric Ford and GM products, but they aren't there yet. And you would think they're probably going to launch with the half tons, not with the heavier duty trucks in electrified trucks. And I think I'm thinking that because the battery banks take, are so dadgum heavy and, and take up so much camper. space that you already don't have the capacity. So that's how it affects our products that we're used to. But then there's a whole other world of anything that's motorized. Uh, B vans, Class C vehicles, uh, Super C's, um, the buses. Did you say Super C? The Super C. What's a Super C? It's a really good C. Super. Yeah. I think it's just bigger. It's bigger. Bigger C. So what do you think this is going to mean for travelers? People who are, who are really invested in RVing right now. What do you think their take is going to be on this? Did it pass this California? From what I can see, yes, in 2035. 
Okay, so it passed, and it, and it's and basically they're saying, okay, so that sets the deadline for when it's going to be ultimately implemented. And I'd love to read it to see if there's any you know stages or steps to go through. But yeah, how do you, what do you think the take is going to be from the people who do this, the people who RV? Uh, I, I don't, I, I have no idea. I think some people will be happy. I mean, it's kind of like the generator thing. We had like a whole divide of like people who thought it was ridiculous and people who really liked the environmental side of it. Right. I, I'm worried about the people who are planning for the future because this isn't that far away. No, we're, we're 13 years. Yeah. 12, 12 years. So a lot of people, that is when they start thinking about the dream and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I, I guess I don't, I don't know. We'll have to see what happens. But this, I mean, it. this is huge. Yeah. So from a... From a trailer and truck camper, our normal categories, uh, from that standpoint, this doesn't hurt our products that much because so many of our manufacturers are already gearing their components that way. We're finding way more of the converters that automatically detect battery what kind of battery you have. Yeah. They're, they're building these things out to accept larger battery banks of lithium ion. Some of the manufacturers yeah. are offering the lithium ion. We have major inverters. We have 12 volt compressor refrigerators, 12 volt air conditioners now. Yeah, uh, there's there's a lot of stuff that's already gone that way in those segments. So I don't think it affects our products so much, but it really affects the ability today. Mm-hmm. Maybe some big change is coming in the next 15-ish years, but this really affects in a big way the ability to get your RV to any place that you might already have on your list of destinations. Right. You might not be able to go as far. And yeah, I think that's exciting is figuring out, okay, if if this is going to happen, then mm-hmm. what kind of advancements are going to be made mm-hmm. on electric vehicles uh, as far as like towing capacity right. and holding a charge, right. um, the number of charging stations, because if those things don't change, mm-hmm. then nobody's leaving California with their RV. I mean, right. you're, just, you're right. just not. Well, and then also we, we haven't even talked about the infrastructure it takes to support this many electric vehicles. I mean, the, the I mean, so the grid isn't built in such way at this point in time to offer enough, just basically receptacles for people to charge things. And that is part of the plan too, that okay. I was reading about. Like that's obviously a concern and that's right. That's a whole nother section. And our current way of getting electricity into all these p- battery packs that vehicles currently have, it is not less pollutant. Right now, our, our U.S. power grid still relies too much on coal and natural gas and things like that to say that from a green standpoint that is viable. So we're we're still behind on this making obviously this the rollouts in 2035 or, or that's my understanding of it doesn't 2035 but sound so far away it sounds so far, far away but it's it sounds 12 so to 13 far years. away that's yeah. so crazy so the so the rollout may be it out there ish but if it were to if they were to come down and like this is happening next week absolute failure like like th- this, this looks like a hopeful bill to me right yeah. now for it, for the people who put it through, they they put it through on a on a hope that that technology and infrastructure can get there. It's it'll be interesting. It'll be a fun ten years. Okay. We'll, uh, so that was pretty much all of this. Okay. Yeah. Because all of your uh, page one and page two is okay. Oh, so short. Okay. Well, what you but got? we're gonna expand on this. Okay. Uh, another thing that I saw, and again, you might already know about this. A uh, couple states: Colorado, Utah, Arizona, uh, and more are tightening up on the rules on dispersed camping, BLM land camping mm-hmm. in 2023. Interesting. Basically, what happened, uh, as you could probably guess. Everybody bought an RV and went camping. Right. Everybody maybe took advantage 
<laughs> or, of this yeah. BLM land. And here's the deal. You can take advantage and not know that that's what you're doing. And yeah. I think that a lot of that was going on. You don't know what you're doing. You don't yes. know that you're doing it wrong. You and, are new yeah. to this and don't. Right. Yeah. Um, there were a lot of unattended fires. There was a lot of. Ooh, Smokey was mad. Um, noise and light pollution. Right. And people all over the country who live in these areas said, this has got to stop. Sure, this is sure. crazy. So camping is slowing down, but some of the states have tightened up their rules. So if you plan on going camping in 2023, I would kind of look up, you know, the guidelines Do your due for diligence. dispersed camping Call a ranger. in some of these states, because yeah. what has been the same for years mm-hmm. and years and years now needs a little changing because of the amount of people that are out there right. doing it and we have to just be careful with what we're what we're screwing up as humans. So part of what drove people out there was access to social media that didn't display an accurate picture of what it was. I think. I think yeah, that that's true. I think that modern technology and media outlets and you know the the Instagrams, the TikToks, the van life generation the tiki talkies tiki talkies um all these outlets gave such a curated view of what it could be like and and all and that drove the masses out there but they were an unprepared unprepared yeah it wasn't they weren't watching like enough of the what is it really like like watching an episode of naked and afraid yeah, they didn't watch enough of that. Yeah, you got to watch enough of Naked and Afraid before you go out there. That's completely realistic. Mm-hmm. And so you got to start with something that realistic, <laughs> that bare bones. <laughs> At an RV. Yeah. <laughs> so so what do you think the problems that people... So you said the noise pollution and the light pollution. I 100% believe that. Yeah, it's funny. They actually talked less about trash really and you know people leaving things Mm -hmm. and really focused on um unattended unattended fires um gathering of wood and other things right that's starting to kind of affect the environment absolutely it does because that's what happens right and the noise and light pollution which was coming from Mm -hmm. you know the neighbors of these these public land areas that they were saying i'm wondering if there's a bit of just keeping an eye on how much destruction of i say property but i mean it's the government property really Uh, but it's it's property yeah so so the destruction that we saw because there was a big rash early on in uh 2020 21 and 20 yeah, 2020 and 2021, where with the influx of people camping, you also saw so many news reports of just irreplaceable natural. Oh, uh, yeah. Being like defaced. Defaced and, yeah. and painted on uh, or. That or was a thing. Etched into or or the overlanders, the the ones who, who have been doing it for years are like people are driving off the trails. Hasn't anyone ever told them not to drive off off the the trails? trails. And there's and so many people were like, "Woohoo! I got four wheel drive now. Mud and mud and mud and mud." (laughs) Yeah, there's. I mean, I don't know. I I understand the thought of you know uh, dispersed camping. I'm out on my own. There are no rules, right? It's kind of like Uh, no man's land. It's like how people maybe enter that. Oh, yeah. I've ultimate freedom of camping however I want, wherever I Which want. Which is what the, the feeling we all want is this ultimate freedom. But uh, the reality is every everything that you do when you're camping affects, you know, mm-hmm. the, the area around sure. you. Sure. Uh, and maybe maybe you don't care about the life experience of the ants and the roly polies and the butterflies and all that. How dare you? But... The, f- the fact is, it's an ecosystem and it's, it's all the butterfly effect, tied man. together. <laughs> Haven't you ever seen Biodome with Polly Shore? Yeah, I have. Gosh, that was a long time ago. I feel dumber having now remembered it. <laughs> God, that movie is so good. Don't you. Don't you knock that movie. Everybody, your homework. Look up or stream Biodome. Chew, lose the pillow. <laughs> so anyway, um, I think it's good news. But just like some things are changing, so make sure you check. This is going to check affect with your state. Even some of our friends who who are very 
they do have a very concerted effort to do it right. And it, because they full time, they full time on public land, which means that you have to be very aware of how long you're staying places and how you're mm-hmm. using the place. So this is actually going to very immediately affect them. Even people who've been on our podcast, um, they're going to have to be more aware of the time, the place. and how Yeah, they use it. the time is changing a lot of places. Um, and then do, do, do. Did I not write it down? I don't think I did. Uh, I think it is Utah mm-hmm. and or Arizona that is literally just closing a big section. That's amazing. Of dispersed camping land. Because like, those are like the the places. Yeah, for, they're just cutting what, it what off. they're known for. So I'm wondering also if this is a resource issue. I think it's always or been like, a resource issue, but I think like a manpower resource issue involved in this. And it's probably, I mean, at least hopefully a temporary thing. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we're going to close this Right. For the next year. Well, maybe it's a little bit like they go section by section just to let the land yeah. heal a little bit. And I don't know a lot about this. So, yeah, maybe this isn't such a big deal. Right. Um, I just fell into like the news trap of like, oh, my gosh, this mm-hmm. is a big deal because mm-hmm. it looks well, like. Well, you know, that's the nice thing about your first and second touch with a subject or news story is we can talk about it and wonder and it's OK. We don't have to be experts. <laughs> we are not experts. But we can wonder aloud. I am an fine. expert on um, Biodome with Polly Shore. I am not. Also Naked but and Afraid. Definitely an expert. I also am not an expert on it. I have different areas of expertise. You do. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a little bit more useful. Uh, what else you got here? Okay. So the third news story. Mm-hmm. Don't read this. Don't read that. Got it. Don't read not this. Reading it. Okay. The third story is not as interesting to anyone but me, but Venture RV, which is a manufacturer that we carry here. What do we carry of theirs? Uh, uh, Venture does the KZ and yes. they also do the Sonics. Yes. And the new Sonic X. Okay. Which is a very cool trailer. Uh-huh. Um, they received the 2022 RVDA Quality Circle Award. Blah, blah, blah. Who cares? Okay. But, mm-hmm. but it actually is a pretty cool thing. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously it's based on quality and I thought this was cool. Venture RV achieved a 78.8% brand score, which is almost double the industry standard Whoa. at 39.6. So you haven't gone through grade schools. 78 is like, well, you know. Right. But the, like they. It's like, like. The industry standard is 36. Wow. Right. So anyway, congratulations, Venture RV. Not yeah. a huge news story, but since it's a brand that I am familiar with, mm-hmm. I was just kind of shocked that mm-hmm. um, th- they got a great score and they're a super quality brand. I recall now that when I was in Elkhart a few weeks ago with PJ, Sue Ann, and, and, and I, actually your dad was there too. Mm-hmm. Um, we, as we were going through the Elkhart open house show, we did spend more time in the Sonics and Sonic X go, think just sitting in them. And, and we were moving fast all, all week, but there were a few places in each display where like, we found ourselves actually spending time sitting and just looking and marveling a little bit. And the Sonic the Sonics, well. the Sonics were one of those places. And we, when we've seen as many trailers as we have, you see very, I mean, large, across the board, a lot of commonalities. Mm-hmm. But the Sonics were doing some things different. And, and I'm excited for them, for the 2023s to actually really start heat, hitting the scene. Um, because I'd love to just know, I guess, the market's take. Yeah. They, they're very cool. And we just got two of those Sonic X's on our mm-hmm. lot. And just the first thing I noticed was that um, it's kind of like a bumper bar Mm -hmm. that like goes around the exterior of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And aesthetically, like some people might not like that, but I think not only does it look cool as hell, but oh my God, what a great idea. (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) Like, yes, you have protection around your entire RV because 
you're going to hit a tree. That's like right. you're just going to. That's right. Oh, I just thought it was genius. Um, but there's a lot of cool things on that Sonic mm-hmm. X. So I just thought that was just a neat little um, tidbit. Okay. And so then I thought, all right, I didn't write enough stuff. And we, I and I've, we and don't I've have kept enough my to eyes talk off about. of it, but I'm going to put my, my mug right here so I cannot. <laughs> you just surprised so me. So I was, I was like, okay, what can Clint and I do that's just like super silly okay. for the last part of the podcast? Mm-hmm. So I started thinking about camp songs, like songs with our V in them. And I was like, we can sing songs. Um, I am unprepared Or listen for this. to songs. But what? just 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 wait. Okay, I'm going to hear you So out. I literally Googled you know, songs with RVs in them or RV songs. They're like just something to talk about. And do you know how Google does that thing where it, when you ask a question, it will, no, not autocomplete. When you like ask a question and then like underneath it asks like similar questions and then you can just click on it and get like the answer. Sure. Sure. Okay. So one of them, when I Googled about RV songs, one of the questions said, how do you enjoy an RV? And okay. me being me. Okay, like like which angle? Like like how do you enjoy it? Like oh, I enjoy it a lot. Or or like like what are the steps to enjoy it? Think, yeah, it was like what are the steps? Like oh no, how to enjoy an RV? So I naturally was like, I'm gonna click on that. Right. And then I clicked on it. And what did it say? And the steps are amazing. So I wanted to share them all with you. Okay. 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 So according to Google. Who pulls it from a website somewhere? You can look now because we're going to talk about each of these. Okay, here we go. Number one, how to enjoy (laughs) your RV. (laughs) (laughs) Don't get poop on yourself. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) I just love this. Like Google served this answer up. Yes. I don't know where this came from, but it is the top eight ways to enjoy. I I want to say this is kind of like family feud where it's like the number one answer (laughs) survey says don't don't get get poop poop on on yourself, yourself, which I agree is a very good way to enjoy your RV. Yeah. Like stay yeah. poop free. Unless enjoy you're a dung your RV. beetle. If you're a dung beetle, <laughs> complete you're, you're opposite. You're a crappy time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just, I didn't think it was that common, common enough to be in some sort of like Google analytics here. It's got to be one of the biggest fears though. It may be the biggest fear, right? <laughs> don't get poop. Okay. okay. Um, number two, we have to we have to get through this list because okay. although that one is probably my favorite, there's plenty of other bonkers things right. in here. Now remember the question is, how do you enjoy an RV? Very much, thank you, but that's not okay. the question. First of all, don't get poop on yourself. Yeah. Second of all, remember your toolkit. Logical. Okay. Still And I agree with that one. Kind of a silly answer to how do you and uh, enjoy an RV. Right, right. Because this isn't the, like the actual like relaxing or yeah. How do you enjoy an RV? Window, you don't out. forget your toolkit. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that way you can repair things while you're enjoying. Okay. Number three, pack sufficient cookware, which let me tell you, I have been camping a lot of times and I have never... <laughs> <laughs> ever packed sufficient cookware no, no but i have enjoyed my rv wait i know how? i know that's it, what i I don't <laughs> i'm defying this google list i've never gotten poop on myself <laughs> you haven't lived pack sufficient cookware okay number four use leveling blocks i, I mean, do agree that you're probably gonna enjoy an rv more if if it's if it's level if it's level um yeah and and have, being perfectly dialed in has never been a thing to me but I've ne- also my RVs have never had finicky um, refrigerators that like you gotta have it level yeah that's right uh, my mine have never had that so I think that there's this one doesn't bother me as much particularly with the type of trailer I have with the flyer discover yeah I'm pff, level. <laughs> Who cares? Level-ish. Yeah. yeah. I don't and use, I I don't use a places. bubble level. I just stand nah. back and I'm like, yeah, nah. yeah, it looks fine. I don't, and I think that that comes down to what kind of equipment you have. 
I mean, if your refrigerator stops working because you're not level. Then how are okay. you going to enjoy an RV? Well, you have sufficient cookware. You're fine. <laughs> Did you get poop on yourself? <laughs> okay. Number five. Clint, take it away. Get into your camper. Oh, get into your campground before dark. <laughs> it would have been better if it said get into your camper yeah, yeah, before camp dark. Or, it's spooky out there. <laughs> get into campground before. I mean, okay. But yeah, I mean, does I, this. God, just, I feel like a bot wrote this list I and it's too. cracking me up. Yeah. Okay. Number six. How do you enjoy an RV? You download camping apps. Before, during, and after. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, forget that. That whole trip is blown if you don't have your quota of camping apps. <laughs> Stare at your phone more. Download camping apps to enjoy an RV. Use RV toilet essentials. I mean, we're real heavy on the bathroom stuff here. I feel like I want to create a brand, RV toilet essentials, with an A. I think I need to brand this. No one take that or take it. Just no one I'm take gonna, that. I'm Just gonna, cut me in. I'm not going to move very quickly on this. So <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> All right, number that, eight. That plan has no fiber. Stop it. <laughs> My favorite. Okay. Number eight. How do you enjoy an RV? Okay, I, I can get behind this one. I know, but it's just funny. Wake up early. Uh huh. Watch the sunrise. Yes. Take a nap. Oh, see. It's the three-legged stool. It stands. I feel like that should have been number one. Yeah. And don't get poop on yourself. Because that's go. that's the real experience there. That's the only thing on here that's actually fun. The other things just prevent disaster. <laughs> exactly. Put it that way. I mean, uh, pack sufficient cookware. Google, what are you doing to me? And you know what? There were a lot of other camp questions yeah. that I should have clicked on. Right. And but this, this is the only in. one that I right. clicked on and I was hooked. And now yeah. I think maybe we should do an entire podcast on bots writing camping lists. Sure. That are just ridiculous. Sure. So here's a here's a, a thing. You know that guy that here's we've, a thing. We've, we found on social media and YouTube or not. And he basically creates these really well done songs based off of internet arguments and things like that. Yes. I feel like we should just feed him these lists and he should create wonderful, catchy, clickbaitable songs. Yes. Out of a list like this. Yes. Don't get poop on yourself. <laughs> Keep singing. Remember your toolkit. Uh, see, I'm more, I don't have a style. He has this very modern it's, style. It's modern, but it's I feel, dramatic. Yeah, it's I feel like, very sing-songy and, and like. Is this like, we could write a musical about yeah, musical. this Google yeah. list. The way that I wrote a musical the other day about um, switching from Gmail to Microsoft Outlook. She is not having fun, folks. I'm not, she but instead, not of, um, instead of throwing a fit. Write a song. I've been writing a musical about it. That's right. And a Stay lot of tuned. the songs do sound like fits. <laughs> to be fair, I'm, I'm still throwing a fit, but I'm singing. Okay. I don't know. I mean, uh, we've been so busy. I don't even know what else to talk that's about. The, that's that's why we're sitting down the way we are on this podcast. You and me. What you mean just here in this recliner? Right. At the drop of a hat is because it has been a whirlwind month worth of time. And we just need to sit down and talk about something yeah. on the microphones. Well, this was fun. And we yeah. uh, we always welcome suggestions. Sometimes we have really cool people to interview. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there are like really hot topics to talk about. And sometimes we um, don't have it honed in. So. If you have an idea. That's why it's small talk. <laughs> it's a small talk episode. Yeah, of I mean, small I'm talk, not apologizing. Talk, These are my favorite episodes. Yeah. But if you have something you want to hear about, I don't understand how to find the best RV for me. I don't understand how to camp this way. I you know, the, the would episode, like to hear from wildlife experts. Sure. I don't know. Just tell us. That RV dating game episode, I think worked, worked well for us. If you haven't listened that to that one fun. yet, the RV dating game episode was a lot of fun. That That's was a fun. few episodes back. So if you have anybody you would like to hear from, any subjects you would like us to talk about, technical things, we can do all of that. Mm -hmm. Just hit us up, RV Small Talk Community 
on Facebook. What is our email address again? We haven't Info. put it out there in a while. No, it was questions, wasn't it? Questions, questions at rvsmalltalk.com. At rvsmalltalk.com. Send them to us. We are so on top of this. You know, I think we're doing great. Cool. And you know what? Do you have poop on you? I don't. Therefore, my camping trip must be going I don't, well. I don't have poop on me either. So I think we're enjoying ourselves. There you are. <laughs> Everybody, thank you for joining us on this episode of the RV Small Talk podcast. You can find other episodes at rvsmalltalk.com. And if you just look us up on social media or YouTube under RV Small Talk, we will show up. Subscribe, join in, comment, what have you. We do appreciate you sticking with us. And yes, we do appreciate you feeding us ideas on what you would like us to chat about because that's all this is it's a chat. And you chat. get to be a part of it. So thank you so much for being part of this, this thing we do. We will see you next time. And until then, um, enjoy your RV. You know, bring sufficient cookware. Mm-hmm. Don't get poop on yourself. And, and do your California travels before 2035. Yes.